where's my little buddy? We don't always see eye to eye. You're on, brother. Thank you. And you're off. I'm on. Thank you. There's a question. Now, how does God regard people who collapse under the stress and the pain of life? People who just collapse. I did some research on the 17th dynasty uh, which uh, coincides with the life of Jacob and Joseph. It's a fascinating study. The story of Jacob and Joseph will explain in a certain way the problem of chronic pain. Chronic pain. This is Hephron. A very interesting sight, difficult to get there, but it's rewarding. Genesis 42, 38. Their father Jacob said to them, He have deprived me of children. Joseph is no more. What happened to Joseph? Yes, they, he thought he was dead. And Simeon is no more. Where was Simeon? He was in jail. Have you ever had a child that went to jail? And now you want to take Benjamin. And then a cry of desperation. Everything, including God, is against me. And here this man of God just sank into a depression. Has life treated you this way? Now why did this happen to Jacob? Why does it happen to us? At Hebron I told Loretta, we were designed for only hearing good news, not bad news. We'll never get used to bad news. This wasn't in God's original plan. Into the experience of all, it includes all of us, there come times of keen disappointment and utter discouragement. Days when sorrow is the portion and it is hard to believe that God is still the kind benefactor that his earthborn children, of his earthborn children. Days when troubles harass the soul till death seems preferable to life. I meet so many people who say, I wish I was dead. It is then that many lose their hold on God. Could we at such times, if you are in such times, discern with spiritual insight the meaning of God's providences, we should see angels seeking to save ourselves, seeking to save us from ourselves, which is the greatest enemy, striving to plant our feet upon a foundation more firm than the everlasting hills. And new faith, new life would spring into being. This is Mamre at Hephron. How did Jacob react to the news that his favorite son was killed? Uh, 
Have you had this experience? You know, you can, you can replace a spouse, but you cannot replace a child when a child dies. Just think of Jacob's pain. His favorite son was devoured by a wild animal. And maybe he saw this action. Genesis 37, 31 to 33. Then they got Joseph's robe, slaughtered the goat and dipped the robe in the blood. They took the ornamented robe back to their father and said, We found this. Examine it to see whether it is your son's robe. He recognized it and said, Can you see Jacob? It is my son's robe. Just breaking down. Some ferocious animal has devoured him. Joseph has surely been torn to pieces. Jacob tore his clothes, put on sackcloth, and mourned for his son many days. All his sons and daughters came to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. No, he said, in mourning I will go down to the grave to my son. So the father wept for him. Has this been your experience? Are you suffering from chronic grief? Ecclesiastes 3 verse 4 has got the message for you. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. So maybe your time of grief is over. And the time to laugh has come. How long did Jacob mourn the death of his beloved son? 22 years. Another tragedy struck. Famine. You know, troubles like to come together to you. So, yes, famine. His camels died. He lost sheep. He was going bankrupt. And, he's, and he had, in addition to that, this chronic pain, weeping about his son, mourning about his son. So Jacob sends his sons to go and buy food in Egypt. And what report about Simeon they brought on their return? The poor old man, dad, Simeon is jailed. Now the Egyptian uh, jails were no picnic. It was worse than death. So he lost, Jake, he lost Joseph, and now Simeon is in jail. It's adding up. And then the man who is Lord over the land said to us, now poor old Jacob, listen to this. This is how I will know whether you are honest men. Leave one of your brothers here with me and take food for the starving households and go. But bring your youngest brother to me so I will know that you are no spies but honest men. Then I will give your brother back to you and you can trade in the land. Who was the youngest brother? Who was his mother? Rachel. Rachel. Yeah. This is not uh, the youngest brother. <laughs> it's a joy for Walter to travel with me in the Middle East. He's happy when the tour ends. Yeah. He's sitting on a camel here. He never knew that he was riding camels in the desert. This is the evidence. In anticipation of the loss of Benjamin, Jacob's grief deepened. 
You know, we anticipate problems and we suffer because of problems that have not come yet. We are brilliant to put grief upon grief upon grief upon us. Their father Jacob said to them, now you've got the background. You've deprived me of children. Joseph is no more and Simeon is no more. And now you want to take Benjamin. He clung on to this youngest boy. Everything is against me. He had a mental collapse. What happens to your vision when your eyes are filled with tears? You cannot focus. Now this is Loretta when she was very small. She had a doll called Takhar Sunny. That's an Afrikaans name. A Takhar means somebody whose, whose hair stands like this. But she loved this doll. And I had a little beetle, VW, and there was a handle and you pull the handle and the hot air would come from the back. And while she was sleeping, Takhar Sunny fell before this hole where the hot air comes in, goes out. And when she looked at Takhar Sunny, who was all twisted, she began to cry. And the more she cried, the worse becomes the visual distortion. And this was a vicious, vicious act. She couldn't concentrate, she couldn't focus. And then I started to laugh. You know, we are saddest, say. We laugh when somebody else is in an embarrassment. I laughed so I couldn't drive. <laughs> and I had to stop. Tears distort your vision. Not only literal tears but the tears we are weeping. How is your focus? How is your focus? Does God care about crybabies? He's a bit slow, but I love this man. Is there a cure for my chronic pain and depression? Yes, he cares. Oh, yes, he cares. I know he cares. I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief. He's touched with my grief. When the days are weary, when the days are weary, the long nights dreary, long nights dreary I know my Savior cares. Touched with my grief. He's touched with my grief. When the days are weary. When the days are 
The long nights dreary. I know my Savior cares. My Savior cares. When Jacob sent an email to God saying everything is against me, the Lord deleted the message. He knows how frail we are. Matthew 22, verse 30, 32. I'm the God of Abram, brilliant man. I'm the God of Isaac, a very friendly man. And the God of Jacob. He's also the God of the Jacobs. The weeping, hurting people. Jacob is a type of the despondent, hurting, devastating person. Joseph is a type of Christ who wipes away our tears. So let's look at the story. Here at Hephron, Jacob greeted his sons on their way to Egypt to buy grain. And when I visit these sites, I can see the old man Hugging, kissing his boys. It's all he's got. His boys. A weeping Jacob embraces Benjamin. Take care, my son. If anything happens to you, I will die. Professor Bittock, an Austrian archaeologist, excavated Afaris. As you see here, and then he filled it up again. The Hyksos came into Egypt, they conquered the land, they went to Memphis, the capital, but they didn't settle their headquarters there. They moved up to Afaris, and it took me a long time to locate this place. The guides couldn't tell me where this was. Eventually I got it, and I took my pictures. So this is the excavations, it's an interesting research. Bitak, Austria. Afaris. Click on the internet and you'll have the info. This filled up area used to be the Hyksos capital where Joseph ruled. So when I come to these sites, the Bible story becomes more real. Somewhere here at Afaris, Simeon was jailed. This is where Joseph placed his silver jug in Benjamin's bag. This is where Joseph discovered the positive change in his brothers. He was not sure if they've changed. Deserted runes testify of the most striking typology in the Bible. There's no other book like the Bible. Guess what happens to me when I study it? Strangely warmed. And when I see people change as a result of Bible study, and you can believe the Bible, please believe it. I've spent a lifetime to research evidences to confirm that this book is true. If you read it and you let the Bible read you, something happens. Somewhere here, Joseph revealed himself to his brothers. <laughs> that was a very emotional moment. It's a beautiful story. This is where the the gospel was illustrated here at Afaris in the Nile Delta, illustrated in a most effective way. 45 verse 1, Then Joseph could no longer control himself before all his attendants, and he cried out, Have everyone leave my presence. Egyptians, get out of here. So there was no one with Joseph when he made himself known to his brothers. What a moment. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard him. The king is crying. And Pharaoh's household heard about it. 
Man, this was a, this was a great cry. <laughs> and then Joseph, after he used about 20 tissues, said to his brothers <clears throat> with a voice that was breaking, I'm Joseph. The first question, is daddy still alive? He missed his father. 22 years he missed the old man. But his brothers were not able to answer him because they were terrified at his presence. The youngster that they sold for cheap, has anybody sold you for cheap? Is now the ruler in Egypt and they got a fright. Retaliation. They were waiting for retaliation. Verse 4, then Joseph said to his brothers, I like this. Walter, listen to this. Come close to me. How do we treat enemies? Get away. <laughs> Joseph says, come close to me. How close? I think he embraced each one of them. Come close to me. Close is not this thus far. It's, it's here. When they had done so, he said, I'm your brother Joseph, the one you sold into Egypt. Gospel sounds. Come close to me. Says the great Joseph, you've sold me on Calvary. I forgive you. Come close to me. I want to be your friend. Let's sing that song. What a friend we have in If you have sold the heavenly Joseph, he says to you, come close to me. He's the sinner's best friend. <laughs> gospel melodies, gospel sounds from ancient Egypt, from the stories of the Bible. How did he soothe their troubled hearts? Now remember, Joseph is a type of Christ. They were troubled. Verse 5, And now, do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. In order to save us, our heavenly Joseph had to die. Gospel music. It is the most beautiful music to the sinner's ear. Wadi Tumilat. I searched a long time for Wadi Tumalat, the ancient biblical Goshen. Verse 9. Now hurry back to my father and say to him, <laughs> say to him, this is what your son Joseph says, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. What is the word? Come down to me. Take your time, but come don't delay. The heavenly Joseph says, if you haven't given your heart to him, come and don't delay. Today, if you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Thank you. Can you hear the echo coming from afar? Come down to me. Don't delay. The Bible is such a wonderful book. It's not myth. You know the scholars, the critic says the first 11 chapters 
of Genesis is a myth. Shame. The gospel music comes from the book of Genesis. Gospel melodies still echo from Wadi Tumelat, Biblical Goshen. You shall live in the region of Goshen and be near me. This is the message from Joseph to Jacob. You, your children and grandchildren, your flocks and herds, and all you have, I will provide for you there. Goshen, which part of Egypt was this? The best. And our heavenly Joseph says, Come, I will provide for you. I will provide for you. In the best part of the cosmos, in my presence, I'm looking forward to that day when I will look into his eyes and just say thank you for the first 10 billion years for saving me. My wife has a problem with me, but the Lord loves me. And I want to say thank you to him. <laughs> That's the melody of the book of Genesis appeal to you. Oh, it's so beautiful. There's no other book like the Bible. Please quote John 14, 1, 2, 3. Pastor Bob, lead them in quoting from the King James. Start. Switch it on. I have problems with this man. <laughs> but like Joseph, I forgive you. We don't see eye to eye, remember? Let not your heart be troubled. Why not? Thank you. The chaos sounds so well. <laughs> He's coming back. These words <clears throat> come from the book of Genesis. There's a home. Mentions. God is excited. He longs to be with us. Now Jacob had a problem. He had to cross a desert to come to Joseph. How would he get to Joseph? <clears throat> Verse 21, Joseph gave them carts. Four by four for desert roads. <laughs> he also gave them provisions for the journey. Now, don't lose the typology here. You are Jacob. Joseph represents Christ. How can I get from here, from my misery, my chronic grief, I'm bank bankrupt, my camels are dying, how do I get to Joseph? And how do I get to my heavenly Joseph? The Bible has got an answer to all our questions. By the way, are you facing deserts? You look at yourself and say to yourself, how will I ever get to heaven? To the heavenly Joseph. Is it possible to cross the sand dunes of temptations, trials, pain, backbiting, rejection, and eventually reach the heavenly Goshen of plenty? Is it possible? Not in your strength, but there's a Joseph who sends provisions and a vehicle to get you there. God arranged for food and transport to get us to the heavenly Goshen. Philippians 4 verse 19. And my God will meet some of your needs. All of your needs. According to his glorious riches in Christ. My father is rich. Yes, what a beautiful song. What about the old tattered clothes? You know, poor people, you can, you can see them. 
the clothes they wear. And can you imagine, poor Jacob, he was walking with the same coat for 22 years. <clears throat> Sandals were gone. And they had to go to Joseph, the ruler of Egypt. They couldn't appear in that type of clothes. Verse 22, to each of them he gave new clothing. Can I appear before the king in my filthy rags? No, he is providing his righteousness to meet him. Gospel melodies from the book of Genesis. Will we too receive heavenly garments? Yes, Isaiah 61.10. I delight greatly in the Lord, my soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of righteousness. <laughs> what else did Joseph send to fetch his father? Now you're looking at an Egyptian donkey. Don't underestimate these donkeys. Genesis 45, 23. And this is what he sent to his father. Ten donkeys loaded with the best things of Egypt. These poor donkeys, they hardly made it with a weight. And ten female donkeys working a little harder, loaded with grain and bread and other provisions for his journey. Can you see those twenty donkeys? Reaching Jacob. Gospel melodies. He is sending you gifts and spiritual uh, riches more than you can handle. Let's go back to Hebron. A lonely, hurting father prayed here somewhere underneath an olive tree. God of my fathers, please protect my children. And then he names them all. You also pray for your children by name. I pray especially for little Benny, my youngest son. Please. And then he, he shed a few tears. Bring him back safely. Bring him back safely. Are you praying for your children to come back? safely what good news did they bring their father on their return what did they tell Joseph when they came to him Joseph is alive what was the bad news shame dad we sorry they had to confess Took them 22 years. Don't wait so long. Uh, don't wait so long. If you've offended somebody, wait not more than 22 years. This is the model. You can do it before. before <laughs> don't punish yourself. This is Dear El Bari, built by Hatshepsut, the daughter of Tutmosis the I, who first built his tomb in the Valley of the Kings. And this is where Moses received his education. And there's Walter and Sonica walking towards near El Bari. Genesis 45, verse 26. They told him, Joseph, Dad, is alive. In fact, we're so proud of him. He's the ruler of all Egypt. And Jacob said, wow, that's marvelous. He was stunned. He did not believe them. In olden days, we gave people Salvalatli if they faint. Have you heard the name Salvalatli? Maybe you've got something else. We are more progressed in South Africa. <laughs> but maybe they gave him, I don't know what, to just help the old man to get better again you know prolonged grief makes one skeptic maybe you're an old maiden who had a disappointment and now you are scared to marry 
or go into a relationship again. This is just normal. Prolonged grief makes one skeptic. Are you skeptic? Herod Gefron Jacob refused to believe the good news about Joseph being alive. He's so used to bad news. Did the pain and disappointment make you a skeptic? What revived jo Jacob's spirit? So his sons could not convince him that Joseph is alive. Now this is a man's verse that I'm going to read. What can revive my spirit, your spirit? 45, 27. When they told him everything Joseph had said to them, and when he saw the carts, <coughs> don't read further, I'll read it for you. <laughs> this is my first sip. But when he saw the carts, Joseph had sent to carry him back. The spirit of their father was revived. Men, when you buy a new car, what happens to your spirit? <laughs> Jacob was the same. Yes. Now something else. When you study archaeology, the Hyksos invented the wagon, the cart. And for the first time, he sees something that he's never seen before. A vehicle that could move him around. He was used to donkeys and camels. And look at this. I imagine uh, how he must have felt. Now this is Tut Ank Amun's chariot. He was called Tut Ank Aten before. Monotheistic and then he became a polytheist. And uh, maybe something like this. What message did Joseph's cards convey to Jacob? He wanted to go to Joseph, but how will I get there? Here is a vehicle, a mechanism to bring him from where he is to where he wants to be. Gospel sounds, gospel music. What takes me from my poverty my wretchedness to the heavenly Goshen. Dad, I think little Benny, Benjamin, the youngest, said to him, Dad, uh, this is a special model that Joseph sent you. It has got mags <laughs> and Gabriel or Armstrong sh sh shock absorbers. Vehicle maintenance plan of 50 years guaranteed by GM on this one. <laughs> and that guaranteed not to overturn and will get you to the end, to the land of Goshen. And while the old man looked at the mags and he checked the shock absorbers, his heart was Yes, his spirit returned. You know, when a sinner realizes <laughs> there is hope for him to get to heaven, his heart is strangely warmed. Nupke Peri in your Tef 5 was the pharaoh during the time of Joseph. Hyksos, inventors of the, the chariot, so the Bible is so spot on, you know. You can trust it. But when they told him everything Joseph had said to them, and when he saw the carts, the latest model, Joseph had sent to carry him, carry him back. The spirit of their father revived. I wish I could see this. <laughs> For the first time the old man smiles. And I think he started to whistle again. <laughs> Tell me, has your spirit died? 
because of pain and disappointments? Do you long for it to revive? God has provided transportation from your grief to eternal happiness. Typology, who does Joseph represent? Yes. Who does Jacob represent? You. Yes. Have you cried? Thank you. The cart, the wagon, the chariot, what does it represent? The mechanism to take you from here to there. The gospel, the good news, you Angelion, the good news. When do our spirits get revived? When we grasp this great message of salvation by faith. Jacob travels along the Nile. He's on his way to his son. Uh, Genesis 45 verse 28. And Israel said, I'm convinced my son Joseph is still alive. I will go and see him before I die. Today when you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Now, can we describe the old man on the wagon? I think he bought a new suit called Man About Town, tie. And you know when you grow old, the hair starts growing from your ears. I don't know why. And your eyebrows, I've got a friend, he's is horizontal. And maybe one of the grandchildren took a little scissor and start, uh, you know, beautifying her grandfather. Sit still, grandfather. Because he was going to Joseph, he must, must look respectable and the, the eyebrows and maybe he had a haircut. I don't know. But uh, he was on the wagon. Are, are you on the wagon? Are you on the wagon? And he would say to Sibylon, man, can you hit the horses? I want to go a little faster. I can see the old man on the wagon. The gospel car. When a lost sinner gets onto God's wagon of grace, the hair growing out of his ears get trimmed. <laughs> Our behavior change. The law kicks in and you've got a new set of rules. You want to obey because of grace. His behavior changes. Genesis 46, 29. Joseph had his chariot made ready and went to Goshen to meet his father Israel. I like this. This is the climax of the story. And try and visualize the second coming. A wagon is getting ready to meet you halfway. Not halfway, 99% of the way. And Joseph was excited. He was going to see dad again. <laughs> he was going to see his father. Typology? Joseph's preparation. I go to prepare a place for you. John 14 is built on the story of Genesis. Jesus is almost ready to get onto his wagon of divine splendor. He's coming in all his divinity, in all the Father's divinity and splendor and glory to fetch us. To heaven. 46.29 As soon as Joseph appeared before him. Now this word appear in the Hebrew is usually used when God reveals himself. So Moses wants to take us to another great meeting when we will meet our heavenly Joseph as soon as Joseph appeared before him, he threw his arms around his father. 
and wept for a long time. Listen, my brother and sister. When Jesus comes, he's going to throw his arms around you and weep out of gladness that you've made it. Nothing in my hand I bring simply to the cross I saved by grace. Wadi Tumalat, ancient Goshen, where Joseph and Jacob met after 22 years of separation. What was it like? What was it like? It was the greatest display of power, wealth, and beauty in Egyptian history because Joseph was going to meet an old man who almost died because of chronic grief. We all cry. Pain is part of life. Joseph was coming to make an end to the pain in Jacob's heart. And another Joseph is coming to make an end, a final end, to the hurt in your heart. That's typology. As soon as Joseph appeared, this is a very important word, before him, he threw his arms around his father and wept for a little while, only used two tissues for a long time. We'll have time in heaven. And I believe he's going to embrace each one of you for a long time. Home at last. I'm so glad you're here. The meeting was a foretaste of second coming. Now, what did I write here, Walter? There should be a word. What happened to the pain in Jacob's heart? during this embrace. It disappeared. When God embraces us, the pain disappeared. What is going to transpire during the second coming between us and Christ? The pain is going to disappear. You've got many questions. Why this happened to you? Why did it happen to me? It's gone. So if you want to cry, my brothers and sisters, it's going out of fashion one of these days. So cry your heart out. And God will take his great, you call this handkerchief or what do you call it? Yes. He's going to take his great handkerchief of comfort and wipe away the strange phenomena called pain and tears. Wipe away forever. From their eyes we will focus again. There shall be no more death. Death of friendships. Death of relationships. No sorrow. No crying. There shall be no more pain. For the former things have been deleted from the dictionary of heaven. You'll take 10 billion years to get use of another life, the real life. We are, we are invited to leave our chevron of poverty, pain, whatever. Get onto God's wagon of Grace, the gospel, the greatest joy you can bring to God's heart is to accept this invitation to come to heaven. can 
evangelistic series, an older man came forward at an altar call. I met with him, prayed with him, went to his home. We began to talk a little bit, and I said, you know, your name sounds familiar. He said, well, you might know my parents, and he told me their name. And I said, you know what? Just shortly before your parents died, I sat in their living room and we prayed for you. He had dropped out of the church and had been out of the church 45 years. And every day for 45 years, his parents prayed for him, that he would come to the Lord. They never got to see that experience. I baptized that man. And I said in the baptismal tank, I said, you know what? On the resurrection day, your parents are going to come out of their grave. First thing they're going to see is Jesus. And then they're going to look beside them. And right beside them, they're going to see their prayed for son. And he cried. And he says, I've got a concern. And I says, what's that? He says, I have a daughter that's following in my footsteps. She doesn't have anything to do with Jesus. She's drinking alcohol like I am, have been. Do you think that if we prayed for her, that maybe the Lord will touch her heart? I said, it touched yours, didn't it? He says, let's pray together, and we prayed. 
You know, I've got two groups of people that are here this morning. There are parents who are concerned about their children. And they've been praying for them. And you may want me to pray again for your children right now. If you're in that group, I want you to stand. I want you to stand. I want you to see this, folks. The Holy Spirit's got a lot of work to do, doesn't he? There's another group of people. There are those whose parents have been praying for them. And uh, they know they need to come to the Lord. But they just haven't made that commitment yet. Don't wait until your parents are dead. But if you want to make that commitment, I want you to stand with this group as well, too. Make that stand of saying, Lord, I, I, I want to make a commitment today to follow you. Praise God. Praise God. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Oh, Father, there is a lot of heartache that is here. And I want this brother to continue to be praying for these two individuals. Please pray. Father God, Lord, we are in so much awe as we see the detailed plan that you have in front of us. Lord, we thank you for this blessing that of the greater understanding, Lord, of what your plans are for our lives. And Lord, we submit ourselves fully to you. We yearn for your soon return. And Lord, we ask that we uh, stay faithful to you, Lord. Help us to stay on that, on that wagon, on that boat, Lord. Give us the courage to, Lord, to overcome the trials and temptations that come before us. And Lord, let's help us to lift each other up, to encourage each other, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be ready for your soon return. In Jesus' name. And Father, we want to uplift to you the children of those and grandchildren of those standing. We want them to be in the heavenly kingdom. We don't want any of them missing. And we've got faith in you of saying you don't want them missing either. So our trust is in the Holy Spirit, our only hope, our only strength in this world to come. Do whatever it takes, Lord, to be able to reach those lives and help us to keep from hindering your work. Lord, they're your children and they're ours too. We love them a lot. Please, we're pleading parents, save our children and save us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We're going to take a bit of a break and then we will come back and the Lord will bless us when you hear the theme song. We want to be seated, please. Probably before then, too. We'll... Five minutes after 11, we're going to, st we're going to start up again. <laughs>